Hello, hello, hello. Solutions to this relatively easy high school problem. A solid disk, mass M, radius capital R. On a horizontal surface, and there's always enough friction so that this object will never slip. It will always roll, pure roll. It's connected to a spring, which is attached here to the wall with spring constant K, and the mass of the spring can be ignored. And the question now is when we take this object, move it to the side and let it go, it will start to oscillate, roll and move back and forth, and that motion, as you will see, is obviously a simple harmonic motion. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to predict that. So, when you have to find the period or the frequency of a simple harmonic motion, in principle, there are two very common ways that we do that. One is that we only look at the forces. For instance, take a spring with only a mass at the end, nothing is rolling. Then you have that MA, Newton's law, is minus Kx. And A is the second derivative of x. You get immediately a differential equation. And omega, the angular frequency, we call that angular frequency, is the square root of k over m. And so the period of the oscillation is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. That's the classic way that we always dealt with the spring. There's another way that you can do it. You can say the energy at any moment in time is 1 half mv squared, v being the speed of the mass, plus 1 half kx squared, which is the potential energy of the spring. That's the total energy. And that total energy, if there is no heat, that means if there is no slip, if it's a frictionless surface, then that total energy is conserved. And so the EDT, the derivative of the energy versus time, must be zero. You work that out and within 30 seconds you get exactly the same equation that we had before. The same differential equation and you conclude again that omega is the square root of k over m. This time I will choose the root of the conservation of total energy. I think that's the easiest here, but I'm not saying that the other way wouldn't work. Okay. At any moment in time, there is translational kinetic energy in this object, which is one half of the mass times the speed of the center of mass square. But there is also rotational kinetic energy. And that is one half moment of inertia about this point of rotation times d theta dt. If theta is the angle over which the object moves, then this represents the rotational kinetic energy. If you've forgotten about that, brush up on it. And then the potential energy of the spring is 1 half kx squared. Whether x is positive or negative, it's always 1 half kx squared, because the square of a negative number is the same as the square of the same positive number. So this is the total energy. Look at this. Make sure that you completely digest this. If you miss this, it's all over. 
Okay, let's now go to the next, next, next sheet. So, the moment of inertia about the center is one half mr squared. Since we have pure rho, the theta dt is the speed of the center of mass divided by r. Look at this picture. If this disk has rolled over an angle theta, then the length here is capital R times theta. That is the distance over which the center of mass moves in this direction or in that direction. Because that's because it's pure roll. And so if you now take the derivative, you take d theta dt, that means it is not the distance that the center of mass has moved, but it is the speed. dx dt is speed. Okay, so you see immediately that the pure roll condition is that r times d theta dt is the speed of the center of mass. So now you have to massage this a little further and you have to use these identities and you'll find then that the total energy is what I wrote down here. You see you want to have kx squared and this term here is the sum of these two. You have to use this of course. So now we take the EDT and that is zero. And my shorthand notation, which I have used many times, is that dx dt is x dot and d2x dt squared is x double dot. That's just a shorthand notation. So x dot is, of course, then the velocity of the center of mass. And x double dot is the acceleration of the center of mass is dvc dt. So we take the e dt and we make that zero. If you take that equation and you take the e dt, you'll find this result. If you take the derivative of v squared, then you get 2 vc times v dot. Here you see the Vc, but V dot is also x double dot. V dot is the V dt is x double dot, so that's why you see an x double dot here. Give it some thought. Take the derivative of this equation and confirm that you find this. And divide the Vc out, and now you get x double dot plus 2k over 3m times k is zero. And we are in business! That is a classic differential equation for which the solution is a simple modic motion. Omega is the square root of 2k over 3m. So the period, and that's what I asked you, is 2 pi times the square root of 3m over 2k. Just as a reminder, if this was just an object which was sliding here on a frictionless surface with mass m, then this wouldn't be 3m over 2k, but m over k. It is intuitive that the period now is longer than that. And the reason is that there is rotational kinetic energy in this object because it can roll and that takes time. And so it is not surprising that you don't see m over k here but a number that is larger. It's not obvious that it is one and a half times m over k. 
if m were enormous, it's completely intuitive that it will take forever for one oscillation. If this is an enormous mass, poor string, poor spring, you have to move that back and forth. The spring force is very modest. If the spring constant is huge, then that is an enormous force on a relatively small mass. And so now the period for an oscillation will be very small. So it is also intuitive that for a very large value of k, the period will be small, and that for a very large value of m, the period will be high. My major goal was that you have now seen for the first time, at least for the first time in my biweekly problems, that you can always derive the differential equation, which is characteristic for a simple harmonic motion, to use the conservation of energy. That only works, of course, if there is no heat produced, so no slipping forces. Then you take the derivative of that total energy, you massage the algebra a little bit, and out pops the classical equation, namely that x double dot plus something times x is zero. Or you may find, if you have swinging motion of a pendulum, you may find that theta double dot plus something times theta is zero. Then you have a simple harmonic motion in terms of angle, not in terms of linear displacement. Okay, perhaps some of you learned something, Many of you may be bored because they may say, oh my goodness, I, had, I already had that in my school in India, maybe when I was 13 years old. I'm exaggerating, okay? But most of you have seen this, of course. Take care, have a nice day, and sure, sure, we will be friends. <laughs>